Isaiah chapter 4 verse number 7 He said who art thou O great mountain Before Zerubbabel Thou shalt become what? A plain And he shall bring forth The headstone thereof With shouting, crying Grace, grace upon it The Bible says Who art thou Is a question Who art thou O great mountain Before Zerubbabel is not here you are the one to put your name there. Can, we, can you read it to yourself and I say, Who are that mountain? Before you call your name, before who could talk about it. Zerubbabel is no longer here. You are the one here. Barriers. Say, Who are down barrier? Standing before me. Now, I want to paint that image of barrier so that you can know what you are dealing with. What is barrier? Barrier is an obstacle, an obstacle that bars passage or access. Barrier is an obstacle that bars access or passage. The protector on the window is a barrier. Why do I call it barrier? Because it bars, denies access. You can't go through. You can't walk out through the protector, through the window. Why? There is a barrier. That is a burglar. Burglar proof. So what are the barriers in your family? Define them. If you can remember from your grandfather or your forefathers, you can start defining what barriers look like in your, in your family. Like in my own family is a Parandos family. You might be able to start tracing from your grandfather or great-grandfather or from your maternal home what has been different barriers in the faces of their life. an obstacle that bars passage. Anything that deny you access into what you want is what? Is a barrier. Number two, barrier is an obstruction. An obstruction is an obstruction. Is an obstruction. Obstruction. Whatever that obstructs your access, your inflow. Whatever that obstructs your success, your intellect, your academics, your childbearing, they call it infertility, is an obstruction to fruitfulness. Number three, barrier is a limit. Is a limit. What is a limit? Anything that, are, that also obstructs your access. That limits you from becoming what you want to be. That limits you from assessing grace, assessing success, assessing mercy. If you go to ATM card where there is no cash loaded, and speak in tongues for five years, you will remain there without money. True or false? But prayer works. <laughs> there are certain things that doesn't require prayer. That requires principles. You can access it. Lift up your right hand to heaven. I speak over your life. Whatever that is standing as a limit in your life, Standing as a limit in your family. Standing as a limit in this country against you. In the name that is above every name. As I stretch my hand towards you. I command that limit broken in the name of Jesus. I say I command that limit broken in the name of Jesus. That, lim that amen is not enough. Shout a louder. Amen. Limit. Limit. That is why God said, Who are thou mountain that is standing before Zerubbabel? He said, Today you'll be 
become a plain. And the mountain became a plain. Every mountain in your life shall become a plain. Place your right hand on your head. Say, Father, I declare in the name that is above every name, every barrier in my mind, in my life, in my family. Say, in the name of Jesus, I command you broken. If you believe me, shout a louder amen. amen. So I've been able to explain to you the barrier is an obstacle that bars access or passage. Barrier is an obstruction. Barrier is a limit that limits a man. Then let me ask you a question. Are there some barriers in your family? Are there some obstructions? Are there some, some limits in your family? Can you identify them? Remember last Sunday I said you need to define your what? Objectives. You need to define it. Your objectives. Where are you going from here? What do I want from this man? What do I want from this service? What do I want this year? What are the things I want to achieve this year? You've got to identify them. You've got to define them. So you need to define the barriers in your family and deal with them squarely. If you don't, you remain limited for life. And there is nothing God can do about it. Remember God said, call on me in the days of trouble and I will answer. Which means, if you didn't call him on the day of trouble, he will not answer. What are the barriers we need to deal with today? Number one, mental barriers. What did I say? Mental barriers. Tell anybody, say neighbor. Deal with mental barriers. In other words, mental obstructions, mental limits, mental obstacles. Barriers exist in our mind. That is, you don't see barriers on your way. You see them in your mind. Let me show you an example in the scriptures. Numbers chapter 13, verse 33. Numbers chapter 13, verse 33. He said, and there we saw, this is the children of Israel said, he said, and there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were our, he said, we were in our sight as what? They saw themselves in their sight as what? Grasshoppers. And he said, and so we were. In their sight. And now the, our good news said what? Let's see good news. What did good news say about that? Now, number says, and we even saw giants there. And the descendant of Anak is a, we felt as small as what? And that is how we must have looked to them. Now, they were there and decided how somebody seeing them. That is why somebody's just looking at you. Gets on on on. They 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 come joronjo. Oh, I know. They come joronjo. That is why he's looking at me that way. I like him. He doesn't like me. That is why he's looking at me that way. He said, "To us, we look like we saw ourselves as what grasshoppers, grasshopper, human being turned himself to what every grasshopper mentality must aspire to them." The man with that legs asks the people that does tattoo to write at his back no excuses. Don't you see that that is the mental picture that man sees every day? No. If you look at his leg, he said no. He said, and we saw, and we even saw giants there, the descendants of the Anak, we felt as small. So, your feelings has a lot to do in your future, how you capture your future. I feel great. That's 
That's why when I stand on this altar, I talk to you boldly about my future because that is what I feel. As a man thinketh in his heart, so I'm not a grasshopper. Tell yourself, say, I'm not a grasshopper. Tell yourself, I'm not a failure. Say, I'm not a poor person. That is why sometimes if people are telling you their problems, they make it more worse so that you can pity them and help them. You are killing yourself. You know, I've not eaten for the past three days. And you're looking at the person who told the lady in three days, okay, the, okay, the strong, strong and fresh. He just want to attract pity. Praise God. What do I mean by mental barriers? I'm talking about the pictures in your, ment in, 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 in your mind. Your mental pictures. Who do you see yourself to be? Who do you see yourself to be tomorrow? Presently, who do you feel you are? How do you see yourself? That will determine the courage, the way you carry yourself. That will determine the way you will approach yourself and the way you approach others. I am big. Tell yourself, say, I am big. Tell yourself, I am better than this. I didn't hear. Say it with confidence. Look at yourself, say, I am better than this. I don't know your name. My name is Ugo Chukwa Kwarando. Call your name Ugo Chukwa Kwarando. I am better than this. Touch your neighbor. Say, neighbor, you are big. So, paint the mental picture, church. That inferiority complex. That you look at your neighbor, you feel that she's more beautiful than you. That is why you go to the market and start looking for bleaching cream to bleach yourself because that lady is yellow. And when she's dancing, people are looking at her. And you look at yourself, you are black. And something tells you, inside you, she is better than you. Go be white. Get your bleaching cream. At the end of the day, cancer comes. Who told you that beauty is in the color? Beauty is in the inside. When you exhibit the things that are inside, your beauty shines. You can intimidate me. Tell yourself, say I'm big. Tell yourself, I'm, I'm, I'm more than this. Church, don't belittle yourself or your dreams. Don't belittle your dreams. Don't belittle who you are. Don't belittle the grace of God in your life. I am better than this. I told you why when I began to move, there's a book. I read Mountain Moving Faith among the books I showed you. I, flew, I, I, I took it to Lagos and I, that is the book I was thinking on because I want to do more than that. In one of the paragraphs, Kenneth Hagen said he wanted to buy a land, a, a, a property, a duplex. He saw one duplex in his neighborhood and he liked it. He went and approached the man who owned the property and told him, I want to buy the property. The man said, my friend, get out from here. This house is not for sale. When he was walking out of his house, the man's house, the wife said, I told you, what an embarrassment. He said, don't mind him. He will sell it. He doesn't know it yet. He was not discouraged. He went back. After about two months, he went to the man's house again because God told him he was convinced that God spoke to him. He said to him, sir, how much is the house? I want to buy it. The man said, are you crazy? I don't want to sell my house. Get out. He turned back and said, you know it. You don't want to. You, you will sell it, but you don't know yet. He left. About six months later or so, he went for a program. In that program, he called the man on phone and said, sir, I'm still calling you in respect of that house. Are you ready to sell? The man said, you have disturbed me too much. Since you want to sell, come for negotiation. He summarized the program, came back, called his wife, went to the man's house, paid him for the house. And he said to the wife, what did I tell you? That he will sell it, but he didn't know it yet. Now he has known it. by the Holy Ghost that was when he wanted to buy this land I called the man he said he doesn't want to say his life I should clear in fact the tenant there told him that I used to come into that place he warned me say please I don't want to see in that property again leave 
that book, my spirit man was on. I began to pray in the Holy Ghost. One day I was praying in the Holy Ghost, studying that book, ready from beginning to the end. Began again, I began to read the book. And God said to me, a man said to me, send him test message. And I sent him test message, sir. Mr. Son, do this. I said, sir, in respect of that land, I was still praying. Le shata paroko shata paladej. Test message replied. Brrm. I opened it. He said, if you need it, come for negotiation. I summarized prayer. And I called him on phone. He said, you can come tomorrow. So I called some church leaders. We went to his house. You know what they told me? He said, since you, I don't want to sell my land, but since you want it, you will give me my price. 6.5 million. The land then was 1.5 he said, 6.5 million. I got angry. I said, I will not buy. While I was praying, God said, if I give you the money, won't you buy? I said, I will buy. He said, then go for it. And at the end of the day, we bought the land, 6.5 million. Because I believed what I read. And I practiced it. It worked. He said, we were like grasshoppers. So the picture you paint about you is what makes people relegate really you, what makes people despise you. Package yourself. I am somebody. Even if when they insult you, don't mind them. They don't know who you are. A day will come, they will honor you and shake you with two hands. There are people who, who spoke nonsense about me several years ago, who didn't believe in my future. But now when I appear, they shake me with two hands. I say, it is well with you. They didn't know my future. Even when I was talking positive, they didn't know it. They thought I was proud. I wasn't proud. I was confessing the mental picture of my desire end. Lift up your right hand and say 2023. In the name that is above every name. Every wrong picture I have painted on myself today is cancelled in Jesus name. Say amen. amen. Come to think of it sister. You say you are not beautiful. Nobody will marry you. You say who will marry me? Oh brother. You say who will marry you? Look at the man with her legs. Got married. Has three children now. Two, bo two girls and one boy. Look at the other man. Married. If you are the person, will you marry the person? There is always a woman for a man. There is always a man for a woman. When your time comes, let them have the right mental picture. When the time comes, when that person sees you, the picture will magnet. Say, I am big. Say, I am more than this. Am I talking to somebody here? Don't belittle yourself. Look at what David said in Psalm 139 verse 14. He said, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works. And that, and that my soul know it right way. Now he said, my soul knows this one way, way. That I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I know this thing. Without you telling me, I know I am great. Without you telling me, I know. Without you prophesying to me, I know that my later end shall be greater than the beginning. I know it. He said, because, he said, I will praise God. Let's give me good news version. Maliko Shataya. Something will happen here today. He said, I will praise you because you are to be feared. All you do is strange and wonderful. He said, I know it with all my heart. God does not create bad things. He created me. I am wonderfully made. I am fine. I am great. I am wired and loaded. Eh? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Nobody should tell you you are, you are not beautiful and you are crying. Now, now he make you. God who made you say you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Paint the picture around you. Walk with your shoulders high with humility. When your time comes, people will celebrate you. mental picture. Who are you? The man said you need to define who you are. Don't let your disabilities rob you of your abilities. Don't let it. Don't let your incompetence rob you of areas you are competent. Don't let your weakness throw you down. See, People who went down are people who accepted their weakness and their failure. If you refuse to accept failure, 
you will remain a failure. If you get down, get up. If you go down, get up. As many as you went down, go up. Somebody's not hearing what I'm saying this morning. So, the way you see yourself is how others will see you. He said, we, we are like grasshoppers. Even I, we believe in their eyes. That is the way they see us. And they, also, they saw them as grasshoppers. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. I'm not a failure. Say to yourself, say, I'm not a failure. Say it again, say, I'm not a failure. Say, say I'm not a sinner. Say, I'm righteous. The Bible says, you see, the Bible says, we are the righteousness of God. So people are sin conscious. They have eyes to see sin. I presume by now, sin is going on there. I presume by now, this is going on. No, 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 no. I have the nature of God in me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I'm not a failure. I'm a success. I'm not a victim. I'm a victor. I'm a hero because he conquered. My life is in him and his life is in Christ. So if my life is in him, I can't die by accident. Accident is not my portion. If anyone dies, that is your business. Me, that is my own business. I can't die because I am in him. What do you see about yourself? What picture do you paint about yourself? Somebody sang, I don't know how to sing. Sing it one more time. Who could believe I could be this man today? Who could believe? I was sleeping inside the church. I had my bag inside the church. Under the bench in the church. I had no future looking at it. I have no man. I have no friend. Who could believe? Who could believe? I can start. I can wear a suit like this. Ah! Keep the picture before you. Keep the picture of your end before you. Keep the picture before you. Discouragement will come. Men will speak against you. People will disbelieve you. Keep the mental picture of who you want to be. One day, they will celebrate you. One day they say, I know, I know, I know you, I know you, you will become this. Lift up your right hand and say, my father, every mental barrier in my mind, Say in the name of Jesus, as I clap my hands and pray, let them break, let them break, let them break, let mental barriers break, mental barriers break, demonic barriers break, pakatusha, inanusia, poronia, ikasutalama, ipreketu, I cast out every mental barrier, barriers of failure, barriers of weakness, barriers of the enemy, barriers, keposia, family altars, perenusata, by the power of God, we break them now. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. He said, I'm, I know it. I know that whatever you create is powerful. So I'm powerful. I am blessed. The way you see yourself is how you, the enemy see you. One day, Elisha and his servant Elijah, Elijah was sleeping one early in the morning and Gehazi the servant was around, was outside. When he came outside, they saw the whole house surrounded with soldiers. Men on horses with spare. All positioned. Over a thousand soldiers surrounded their house. The servant saw it and lost his faith. What they shouted to the man, he said, Alas, my master, we are like dead men. That is the picture he saw. Dead men. With such soldiers, we are dead people. And Elisha 
soldiers said to him, what is it? He says, Syrians are Syrian soldiers. They have invaded everywhere. They have covered the whole place. The picture he has is, I know the thought I think towards you, the thought of good, not evil, to give you a future and a hope. He will give his angels charge over you. To bear you up, lest you dash your foot against he said they will come against you in one way, but they will flee in seven ways. That is the picture. That is the mental picture before him. And you know what he said? He said, oh God, open his eyes. Lake Parado Shatala. Immediately, instantly, God unveiled, opened his eyes. He saw soldiers inside the compound with a magazine, AK-47. He saw angelic tanks inside the compound. Kalano Shataya. And when he saw it, he began to shout, if you can see your future, you will cry no more. <laughs> God opened his eyes. He saw the barrier and they broke through his speech supernaturally. I know who I am. Tell your neighbor, say, I know who I am. 2023. Say 2023. You will manifest God. So, mental barriers is what you need to deal with. Whatever that makes you like a grasshopper, makes you as a failure, that when you see situation, you see problem. Church, when I see problem, I, you know what I think about, how do I solve this, how do I walk out from this? I see solution, not trouble. I break through obstacles with my mind first. Then I see the physical manifestation. Number two, unbelief. Unbelief. That is why the barriers have been existing in our families because we don't believe we can break through it. We don't believe we can cross it. We don't believe we can jump. We can cross it. They say try. Bam, bam, if I try, I will fall down. Apply for the job. How can I apply? I'm not qualified. You know, I'm not educated. How can I apply? Unbelief. Matthew chapter 13 verse 58. And he said, he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Jesus could not do mighty works in the city because of the unbelief of the people. Why? Son of the carpenter. <laughs> they said, Joe, how can Joe do here? Jesus, why Joe? Then I said, I am blind, I will see. He, 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 is he not the one that sold that locker to my son last time? Church, you know why some believers in church don't get more miracles fast? Because they are too used to their pastor. That is why unbelievers, those who come to church for the first time, they receive more miracle because they came with expectation. But the other one, all cargoes in church, they are used to it. I know now the next thing I say, God bless you now. The pastor, he will not finish more. He will not give one money. Watch now. They, are, they, they, they have re, they, they read everything and as a result of unbelief, their power cannot go through them. What we do here is supernatural current. Once it flows from throne down here and connects to you, miracle takes place. But if it passes through you and your body is insulated, is covered, the current will pass you and enter somebody else. That's what you see in church. Hey, somebody received a miracle. Somebody at the back said, I got it. And this is what in front said, I'm not here since so I better be able. He couldn't do much miracle because, you know, that's why they said, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Now listen. Number one. Unbelief obstructs supernatural access. Unbelief obstructs supernatural, limits supernatural, bars supernatural.
supernatural access. Unbelief limits our mental capacity and productivity. That is why we are not productive because of our unbelief. We don't believe we can. We don't believe we can make it. We don't believe we can do well. We don't believe we can have a child even without womb. God can give you a child without womb. What do you want? Is it womb or a child? He's a child. God can create. For God to give you a womb, a child, he must put womb there. When I was talking to the doctors, and they said to me in India, he said, the kidney stone is 12 mm. It can't come out. I told them it will come out. Four times they brought four different doctors. I said it will come out. And the, the guy, the administrator, said, the administrator said, you will still come back to India again. I said it will come out. How will it come out? He said, Nothing, nothing is bigger than the two urethra. I said it will come out. Did it come out? It came out. A month time it came out. How did it come? It was bigger than the urethra, but God broke it into pieces. It came three times. The first time, the first one, two came out. And I went to Portacot. I was in a conference. We had two hours, 30 minutes prayers, non-stop. Under that intense grace, that Thursday night, we prayed that prayer. I got home and slept in my hotel room. Woke up in the morning, another one came out. What do you want? Is it surgery or come out? Is, is it not come out? Which one do you want? What do you want this year? Is, is it no solution? A solution will come. God knows that for him to give you solution, their solution is money. Money is the major solution. But when I try to go here, this will be the, the song of Thanksgiving song of somebody here this year. I say it will be your song this year. I say it will be your song this year. Can you sing it with me? Are you sure? Sing it one more time. Will be your song. Give your neighbor high five. Say, neighbor, I will hear you sing this song this year. Deal with unbelief. Now look at look at look at Abraham. I want to shock you with this scripture. Now Romans chapter four, verse number twenty. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. He said, Abraham, Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through what? But he was what? Strong in faith, giving glory to God. So, the antidote for unbelief is faith. Strong faith in God. Is able, is able. I know he's able. I know my God is able to do. He said, He staggered not. He was barren for 90 years. At the age of 90, he was still barren. At almost 100, he was still barren. He got married for 60 years. There was no child. Yet! Unbelief wasn't a problem. He believed God. You know why most of us don't receive miracle? Because we just serve God for three years. And we say that since three years, I've been dedicated, nothing has happened. Brother, what you see here happening today is 25 years of waiting in full time. 
I got born again at an age, uh, the year 1990. 1990 till now is 32, 33 years. 33 years. I have been ready. I have been waiting for God for 33 years. What you see, the glory you see now in the church started about 10 years ago. What of the 20 something years of waiting? Where you, you serve and you go and check the one. Church, it's unconditional. If you bless me or not, my service and commitment remains intact. Some people say, Lord, if you don't give me a husband this year, I won't serve you again. If you don't give me a car, I won't continue. I won't work. I won't serve in the choir. I won't be a worker again. I serve all and get three years away. He made him up. Hey. Abraham was consistent. His Bible said, he staggered. You know what it means? Let's read that scripture from uh, uh, maybe Message Bible. Message Bible. Let's see how he's put it. Message Bible or anything. He said, he did it tiptoe. You know what it means to tiptoe? for two months so we have any yeah tip top native doctor Gloria he said he didn't tip toe around God's promises asking cautiously skeptical questions was almost going down. He looked at God. He took his charger, went to the socket of God and plug. And the charger started again. Mazato Shakataya. And he said he plugged and came up strong. And he said ready for God again. When your battery is full, you are ready to make calls again. Ika Parado Shataya. Lizu Lekata. Lift up your hands. Sato Shakataya. Tell God, say my father. It's a decision this morning. No matter what, I won't give up on you. I won't give up on the word. Open your mouth and say, My father, as I clap and hands and pray, let supernatural strength bring up in me to wait upon you at all times, to stand at all times, to block myself in you, to wait on you until my miracle comes. Pray, pray, church, pray. Touching every soul. 